Hey all, Adam the Exacto Guru here. This video comes from a very personal place for me. I decided to cover this topic last month when my father told me that he had to say goodbye to his best friend. As such, this video is dedicated to my father's best friend, his loyal companion, Spike. Today, I'll be discussing the Celtic view toward dogs, and I hope you'll bear with me. To the ancestors, dogs were more than man's best friend. Due to their hunting skills, their heightened senses of sight, smell, and hearing, they meant that one never needs starve. They were considered invaluable in the hunt, trained for warfare, kept as guardians for the home, and treated as full members of the clan. They were also associated with the practice of divination, seen as omens of death and the other world, which is not feared by the Celt, but welcomed as another part of the cycle. One of the oldest stories that teaches us the kinship with the hound is the Tain Bull Cooley, the cattle raid of Cooley, in which is described a conflict between the lands of Ulster and Connaught for the possession of the brown bull of Cooley. This legend tells of warriors being accompanied into battle by their dogs. Fallen warriors were also described as hounds cut down in the story. Another story which gives us a clear reference to dogs in warfare is that of Magdotho's pig. In this tale, Magdotho is depicted as leading his dog, Elb, into battle against the infantry of the opposition. The, the hound attacks the chariot of Elil and Medib, biting the axle, at which point he is beheaded. However, the grip of his bite was so strong that his head remained fixed to the axle. This is the tale which gives Connaught its name, taken from the phrase Ibar Sin Con, meaning the yew tree of the hound's head. Another area is named for the same dog, Mag Elb, the plain of Elb. The exile of the sons of Uslu tells of the settling of the area now known as Argyllshire. The story describes a more mundane use of dogs in everyday Celtic life. The animals are shown to be used in a hunting capacity and for the herding of the plundered livestock. Finn McCool had two dogs, Bran and Siola. They were especially intelligent and gifted in the hunt, displaying exceptional loyalty to Finn. This is attributed to the tale of their birth. They were born to Finn's aunt, Turin. Turin was said to be cursed after winning the heart of her husband, Ilan Echta, and falling pregnant with his twin children. Ilan had been the lover of Uktel, a member of the Cid, a race of supernatural beings who exist in the other world. Out of jealousy, Uktel turned Turin into a dog herself. While in this dog form, she gave birth to the twins as puppies. Dogs were so respected by the nobility of the ancestors that they were often given as gifts to men who exemplified honor. Further, many clan chiefs and leaders took the name for their own to display their loyalty and courage. Dogs are also an important symbol in the jewelry worn by clan leaders. They are also seen as guardians over roads and crossroads. This plays into their role as omens of death and the other world in that they are seen to guide those who are lost or die away from their homeland. As such, there is a long history of spectral hounds throughout lands inhabited by the Celts. Yell hounds, Gabriel hounds, and ratchets, just to name a few. It gives me great hope to know that Spike will be there, in the other world, to guide the lost to sit with the ancestors. This is a task especially suited to him, as he was a very insistent little dog. And if something needed done, he would not leave us alone until we got up and did it. He was a little dog with one heckin' big spirit. This idea thankfully helped lift my father's spirits some, and helped give him some light in the darkness he was feeling. This last idea is one that runs very counter to the ideas I was presented with growing up in the United Church. 
There, we were taught that there is no place in heaven for animals, that they are separate and lower than humans. This is an idea that never jived well with me, as I couldn't think of animals as being unworthy of the supposed eternal happiness that I would be granted. I don't agree that one can be happy in an afterlife if some of the best companions they've ever had are not allowed there. Well, those are my thoughts on that. If you stuck with me this far, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. I'd also love to read your thoughts and experiences regarding this in the comments below. As always, I look forward to sharing my continuing journey with you all. For now, I'm the Exacto Guru, reminding you to be excellent to each other.